moment, the mood is incredibly volatile. All right, let's go live now to Sydney and get some more reaction from Middle Eastern analyst Amro Ali. It's good to see you today. Thanks for coming on the program. We were just listening to our correspondent Paula Slear in Cairo. She was talking about the regional tensions there. But we also know in Sydney, uh, the Muslims have also uh, made a scene. Uh, admittedly, though, Muslims, they only make up a very small percentage of the population in Australia, yet hundreds already clashing with police outside the U.S. consulate there. Does it come to you as a surprise? Uh, I would say partly it does not come as a surprise. Uh, the Muslim community in Australia is quite diverse, actually. But uh, the Muslim community, and I'll say a subsection of the Muslim community in Western Sydney, has often been a problematic community uh, with, uh, with issues of integration um, and uh, job opportunities, etc. But what happened basically uh, today was uh, it was a very unorganized uh, protest and it brought several factions, some military factions as well, into, into the protest, protests. Uh, as well as um, Sydney just tends to often be uh, a, a territor territorialized city. And if you compare uh, Muslim communities around Australia, let's say like Melbourne, you find a, a, a big contrast between the two. And, uh, and also there's an anti-police subculture within uh, Western Sydney's youth as well. So it wasn't just it wasn't so much that they were in it because they were offended by the by the, by the so by so, do, the so do, you, do you think that do you, do you think that this uh, this showing of anger outside the U.S. consulate in Sydney do you think there are other factors involved perhaps some of them involved uh, some of the people involved were just looking for an excuse to voice their anger over a broad range of issues. I th there is an opportunistic element. Uh, there is there tends to be uh, over the years in Australia there's been grievances against the federal government. Uh, for its uh, right-wing, or not, or, or more, or growing conservatism, should I say, in the public discourse. Uh, having said that, uh, it, it's not an excuse for what happened today in, in Sydney's CBD. It was, uh, it was partly opportunistic and uh, very uh, grotesque, and it really made uh, you know, the Muslim community look very, uh, very bad. Well, well so certainly, as you and I are speaking at the moment, we've been showing pictures on RT that show quite an aggressive response uh, by the police there in Sydney, uh, trying to, uh, well, basically crack down on these protesters there. But now, according to opinion polls, uh, America's popularity in the Muslim world has been falling in the past number of years. So how would you explain that trend? Uh, it's, uh, there, there are several factors for that. Uh, the, uh, the, the Muslim world, which tends to be a very uh, heavily politically uh, loaded term, uh, tends to look at uh, uh, the world through the framework of U.S. foreign policy. So in this case, um, you know, the, the relationship with Israel and the, uh, uh, the double standards that's applied between uh, the treatment of Palestinians and the treatment of um, Israel, and so what you find is uh, this is probably the number one discussed factor. When, when Muslims are asked about this. So it's, you know, as they will say, it's the hypocrisy of the U.S. from the perspective. Well, you, you, I mean, you talk, uh, also, you, you, sorry, I'm so sorry to interrupt, but you, you talk about the, the, the hypocrisy of the U.S. when it comes to foreign policy. I mean, what, one thing I must ask you is that, um, you know, here, here we have uh, U.S. embassies and consulates around the world that are basically under attack. And, and Washington sure. says that it doesn't, it doesn't consider the attacks on its embassies to be an act of war. Uh, so, so it might be surprising to some. What's holding America back? Does it perhaps fear of not fueling the tension even further? Yeah. Well, I mean, the U.S. has strategic interests in the region. You know, uh, it has, and for any, for an act of war to happen, it can't be because of a terrorist incident. It would have to be the state that declares it. Uh, the, uh, the other thing is we're in an election year, or the United States is in an election year. So, uh, you know, you're going to find uh, President Obama and Mitt Romney, they're going to play bravado. But Obama's got to walk a fine line because he's taking into consideration uh, you know, domestic um, demands, which expect him to act tough, but he can't overplay his hand because we know we're talking about the serious risk of you know, rupturing international relations. Uh, and also, I would also want to point out is that it's not just about um, just the profits uh, film or it's an anti-US a uh, motive uh, in these Muslim states. What's happening also basically, uh, for Egypt, for example, uh, you find also uh, domestic actors playing up against each other. So you find the Islamists versus uh, the US, uh, that's an obvious one, but you also have the Salafis versus the Muslim Brotherhood. 
and uh, and, and and something like the pro the, the profit film is also uh, allows one to play identity politics. Uh, don't get me wrong. I mean, you know, people and the Muslim world are offended across the board, but uh, it's also uh, a legitimate cover for them to take it up to advance their agendas. And even uh, those who are not so religious in Egypt have taken up uh, the cause. So if, I mean, I won't say they're not religious, but they're. This, like the revolutionary youths, etc., have used it as a as a pretext to fight the interior ministry. Well, I mean, uh, it, it certainly it certainly has given a lot of a lot of groups around the world a reason to to get together, to coagulate, and certainly a joining chorus with, with their with their uh, with their I suppose uh, upsetness, upsetness and, and just being frustrated with what's going on with this uh, film that allegedly uh, mocks Islam. But uh, Amro Ali, a Middle East analyst at the University of Sydney, we're on day five of these protests, and uh, we'll we'll see if they show any sign of cooling down for now they're not but uh, thanks very much for coming on the rt program today thank you well we are also uh, closely following uh, the violence that